All right, I think we can probably start. Can you hear me well? Yeah, okay, hi. Thank you, Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Sanjay. Good uh, afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this webinar event. Um, this event was first scheduled to happen during Science Week, uh, which got postponed, as um, many of you know, uh, to April next year. Um, but we still wanted to um, hold this um, uh, virtual event um, about this recent partnership um, between Genetic Innovation and Africa Rise. We have an hour-long meeting today um, with several speakers, including Sonia Vermeulen, who's uh, Genetic Innovation Managing Director, um, who will <clears throat> do the welcoming remarks. Then uh, Babukwar Manet, um, Africa Rise, Rise um, Director General, and Sanjay Katiar uh, will also make a presentation in depth about breeding and research services and Africa Rice and the meaning of this partnership. Um, and Sharifa will say a few words, a few words about um, this partnership as well. And we'll have a QA session where you will all be able to ask questions either in the chat or um, directly by raising your hands. Um, the meeting is recorded and uh, the recording will be added to the event page hosted on cgr.org after the meeting. Um, so, yeah, now I'll just uh, pass the floor to Sonia for the welcoming remarks. Thank you so much, everyone. Great. Th thanks, Julie. And hi, everybody. Um, Julie, also thumbs up. Can you hear my voice OK? OK, good. Um, so hi, everybody. So great to see a big turnout um, for this. Um, and it's really wonderful to be um, particularly with Africa Rice colleagues today. So we're going to be hearing um, from the team, the team of Sharifa and Eng and Gustavo, um, a little bit more today um, about uh, this new uh, platform, the establishment um, of, of the new hub. Now, I have three messages about what this is, and they're really in the name. Let's call it a long-term community hub. And in those three words are the messages. So first of all, this is about being a hub. It's a service hub and data hub for West Africa, um, not just for Africa Rice, but for all of our partners, CGR centers, um, and sets to provide um, a set of really useful, cost-effective, um, available, user-friendly services going forward, and services that are based on listening to the needs um, of everybody involved. Uh, we've seen this model working well elsewhere, and going forward, what it does is it sets up Africa Rice to be a real operator and kingpin of activity across the West Africa region. So very exciting hub. The next word is community. I called it a community hub because as well as that technical side, um, a set of services, it's really about building a community of practice, a community of like-minded people working on similar issues, um, able to learn from each other and able to do continuous improvement together going forward. So that's the next part of it, the social side, as well as the technical side, a community hub. And then the last word I put in there was a long-term, a long-term community hub, because the view of this is that we all know um, what breeding needs um, across uh, West Africa, across the whole of Africa and around the world. Um, it is this model of constantly improving how we work so that we can raise genetic gain, shorten breeding cycles. We all know the big challenges that lie ahead. Um, so the idea of being long term is that this um, community hub is stable enough, um, it's well designed, um, it's, it's uh, able to keep doing its work, regardless of any kind of changes that we see, institutional changes in CGIR, we're always seeing name changes, we had excellence in breeding and genetic innovation, now we'll be moving into breeding for tomorrow. What we want to see here is that none of those changes matter. The, um, the uh, agreement that has been signed across CGIR um, between Babakar and myself really sets this up to um, be uh, constantly useful, 
regardless of any further institutional changes going forward. So um, with those words, just to say I am really excited to see this getting up and running. It's a pity we can all see each other face to face in Nairobi, um, but very much looking forward to the long term community hub going forward. Thanks. Those are my um, welcoming remarks. Over to you, Julie. Thank you, Sonia. Um, I think that uh, now Babakar would say a few words on behalf of the Africa Rise. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Julie. And uh, colleagues, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, as a Director General for Africa Rise and also Regional Director for the CGIR in Western Central Africa, but also as a former and present and future breeder, because I refuse to <laughs> let go of my breeder hat. I'm really very happy to give my uh, welcoming speech for this uh, uh, this new partnership that Africa is, is leading, we're, we're getting into with the Genetic Innovation Science Group for the one CGIR. Because it gives us a very big opportunity really to coordinate better, especially with the national programs in the West and Central Africa space to improve crop varieties, to meet the future challenges for climate change, but also with regards to the consumer demands and also the needs of the farmers. So it's a very unique opportunity really for the CG to really establish a strong presence on the ground through Africa Rise, whereby we will be able to coordinate better uh, the modernization of the breeding activities in the CG systems, CG programs, but at the same time also in the national programs in Western Central Africa. As we know, the CG has really been very impactful in the past, but there have always been a lot of questions with regards to the CG's role in uh, capacitizing the national programs, because the when we want to really achieve food security, food and nutrition security in Africa, the CG can do a lot. But as it, for the long term, it is the national programs really who have to take the button to make sure that uh, we get whatever success we have to expand and then also make sure it's sustainable to be able to deliver those products that will meet the needs of our farmers and also the consumers. So this is the reason why this uh, establishment of this platform in West Africa is extremely important. I believe it's going to be a very good achievement where the national programs can get access to high quality platform, high quality uh, genetic uh, analysis capacity, but also even for plant and nutrition analysis capacity so that they can be able to make better predictions with regards to what would be the best varieties, crop varieties that would really meet the needs of the consumers and then the farmers. So this reason why for me, as a DG for Africa Rise, I'm very, very glad about this initiative that the CG is making to try to really move closer to the national programs on the ground, because we have all along been working with the national programs, but this time around is to bring that breeding capacity and expertise daily close to the ground where the national programs can access this high quality and uh, high, uh, very innovative capacities on the ground so that the NAS national program can be able to really access those kind of technologies and capabilities to be able to develop better crop varieties for the future. So I don't want to really uh, talk too much. As you know, later on, we'll be having the launching of the platform itself. But right now, I'm really very glad definitely to express my gratitude for this initiative through the leadership uh, of Sonia, but also of other colleagues also within the BRS program, Eng, and also, of course, uh, Gustavo and the others, to be able to really negotiate and also engage Africa Rise in the establishment of such a platform in the West and Central Africa space. So really, thank you so much, Sonia, for this initiative and also the other colleagues who have been in the background to be able to uh, initiate this activity. And I believe definitely we are well set now definitely to support the national programs to be able to really do better breeding for the future. Thank you and back to you, Julie. Thank you so much. Um, now, Dr. Sanji Katiar, uh, Program Leader for Africa Rice, um, will give a keynote address about um, the objectives and key initiatives 
justice partnership. Uh, thank you, Julie. Uh, can, can you confirm if you can see my screen and also the if my voice is clear? Yes, it's perfect. We can see your screen and your voices. Because I cannot see anyone now in my on my screen. So yeah, please interrupt me if there is any issue. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, everyone, depending upon from which part of the world you have joined us today because I see that there are some people joined from Philippines, uh, which is a late evening there. So we are delighted to welcome you to this event um, of establishment of the Breeding and Research Services Hub at Africa Rise for West and Central Africa. This is what we called it now as when, but uh, as the Sonia has actually, you know, given a new name, we will modify it after they <laughs> launch today. So thank you for joining us uh, today. Today I would like to present actually the objectives, plans and the key initiatives uh, behind the establishment of this hub uh, at you know, Africa Rise for Western Central Africa. Uh, and apart from that, actually, uh, I'm going to give you an overview of the uh, the breeding modernization efforts which have been carried out at Africa Rise in that space and uh, how these uh, modernization things can be extended to, uh, to through this breeding and research services to our national partners uh, in, in working in various crops in Western Central Africa, as you know, the, the Dr. Babukar has emphasized that uh, this is going to be a, a, a long term, you know, association with the national partners. <laughs> but before that, actually, uh, I to go forward. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to actually, you know, begin my presentation by highlighting a, a pressing but often overlooked major challenge uh, that needs an immediate attention. If you see uh, since last six decades or, uh, or now you can say the seven decades, the NAS, NAS breeding programs have been closely aligned with the CGI global breeding programs, uh, playing a very vital role uh, in ensuring the food security at the regional, global or, or at the national level. But if you see in last five years, Uh, in, in the last five years, this, the most of the CGI global breeding programs have undergone the tra a major transformation through breeding modernization by adopting the, the uh, modern breeding principles and best community of practices in order to increase the genetic gain uh, uh, and address the, the global uh, challenges in a much better way. Uh, whereas, if you if you see, unfortunately, the pace of breeding modernization in the public sector NAS breeding programs uh, is not is very slow. It's not only slow, but it is actually very challenging and, and also the complex. And these programs are struggling to adopt the and integrate the technological advances or technological changes for the breeding modernization and. The, as a result of that, what's happening is they, they started dissociating from the CGI breeding programs. So, so this is a, a major challenge. And if, if you continue in the same way and we, if we don't address it actually uh, on a right time, this gap is going to widen. And this is not going to be a situation where we, we, we want to go together. So to achieve the food security and address the other global challenges, you know, the CGI global breeding programs and the public sector NAS breeding programs must work hand in hand and adopt the similar strategies, similar terminologies, similar methodologies and similar, similar objectives. So in, in, in order to give you some overview about the, the breeding modernization efforts at the Africa Rise, this is how the Africa Rise Global Breeding uh, 
and innovation portfolio looks like. We have different divisions where we have the Jamplam resources, where actually this is the home of the global gene bank of Africa rice. We have this, uh, the major uh, global breeding programs, uh, which caters actually the need of the almost 30 countries, 30 African countries, uh, which are actually partnering with us. I'll come to that one in a little while. And then uh, the, the portfolio of the scientific frontiers, where we have the cutting edge technologies, where, uh, we have the collaboration with the advanced research laboratories globally, and then we, we want to bring those technologies in house and incubate it here uh, to use it in the breeding program. And then there is another uh, unit, which is the supporting disciplines, where we have the plant health, pathology, entomology, physiology, grain quality, uh, breeding analytics, uh, and and so on and so forth. So similar, similarly, you know that uh, like other CGR centers, the Africa Rice right Breeding Program, uh, global breeding programs have undergone the breeding modernization in last three to five years uh, by adopting the modern breeding principles and the globally available best community of practices. And we have uh, integrated many of, of these, uh, you know, the recommendations from modern breeding, that is rapid cycle breeding, breeding scheme optimization, predictive breeding, and then the <clears throat> rapid cycle genomic selection, speed breeding and digitization, automation and mechanization of the breeding operations, the integration of the genotyping in breeding, the, uh, the element analysis, and then the quality, grain quality analysis. And uh, very important is actually the adoption of the enterprise breeding system. It's a breeding management system, which is recommended by the CGIR for all the um, globally. And all these, this modernization was actually supported by various gen, uh, CGIR genetic innovation science initiatives, like, you know, accelerated breeding initiative, the BRI, the market intelligence, and then the CD Uh at Africa Rice, we are very proud, actually, to to have you know a very strong and long uh, standing relationship with our national partners in 30 countries with 30 different uh, national institutes uh, listed here, and collectively it is known as actually the Africa Rice Breeding Task Force. So the, through this breeding task force, we actually provide the elite breeding material coming out of the different breeding pipelines of the Africa rice uh, for the testing, evaluation, trialing, uh, and release, uh, release in the different countries. If you see here the map, this is actually the area of impact uh, where the, the Africa rice breeding material is, is going for the testing, trialing, and release of the new varieties. And we, several hundred varieties have been released with the, with the help of these partners in different countries in, in last decades. Now coming to the, to the breeding and research services hub, uh, uh, which is going to be, you know, located at the Africa rice, uh, I would like to to, uh, so, so before that, actually, if you see that the, we, we are working with this Africa Rice Breeding Task Force on, on the, especially on the testing and trialing. One of the major agenda, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, the Africa Rice Breeding Task Force must embrace the breeding modernization. So now with the establishment of this breeding, uh, breeding and research services hub, we'll be able to actually serve to the to the national partners in much better way to help them modernize or transform their existing breeding programs uh, uh, and adopt the similar breeding strategies or the schemes or uh, or the facilities and the services which are available to the Africa rice. So let's see what is what is actually um, uh, is on the table when we have the establishment of the breeding and research services hub at Africa rice, the <laughs> BRS actually is created to support one CGI transformation by institutionalizing services for the breeding operations. And it has a mission uh, to, to actually, you know, help CGI NAS breeding networks access modern breeding practices, technologies, and analytics offered as institutionalized services. Excuse me. So, Let's see what are the different type of services which will be available. 
to the Africa Rice breeding programs and also the national partners and also to the other CGR NAS breeding networks working on different crops in Western Central Africa. So BRS has different actually, you know, units. The, the one is called, you know, the Global Shared Services and Support, where there, there are some field services, you know, trialing and nursery services. I'll come to the detail uh, in, in a while. Then there are laboratory services and very famous and most of the national partners have also used that the high throughput genotyping services provided by the, the global uh, you know, agreements uh, and by the third party. Then we have the high throughput element and then the grain quality services. The uh, digital solutions of the BRS uh, provides the breeding IT services. And this is actually the enterprise breeding system. As I said, that this is actually a, a, a system which is recommended by this the CGIRS for all the institutions. There is another uh, unit which is breeding analytics, which provides large number of the, the cutting edge softwares and and also the the apps to to help breeders actually to analyze the data. Uh, one example is the BioFlow and more. Then the process management and the finance and admin. We'll we'll talk about these first three uh, today in the presentation. So coming to the BRS, uh, this, the global shared services on high throughput genotyping, the, uh, the, there are different type of genotyping services available and which are being used by, uh, by all the CGR institutes and, and their uh, partners uh, are up to certain extent actually globally. So uh, the low density genotyping, uh, using the CASP platform, the, the services are available for 18 plus crops and fish. And there are more than, uh, you know, the thousand plus trade based markers, uh, uh, which are diagnostic or linked markers, uh, where you can do the QTL profiling uh, of any material uh, are available. Then there are about more than 1500 QC markers, which are available uh, in, in different crops. So all these services will be actually available through the breeding and research services hub at Africa Rise to all crops. With regard to the, the, the mid-density genotyping platform, which is actually used for the DNA fingerprinting, for IP protection, and for you know, genomic selection type of activities in the breeding, the, the, there are platforms uh, available to, through the breeding services hub uh, on 10 crops. And then the two more crops will be added, cassava and parmelate in, uh, in, in near future. So the, these services will also be available to all the national partners or the CGR breeding, uh, NAS breeding networks working on different crops through, through Africa Rice. We have a very strong laboratory and a good, uh, well equipped laboratory, you can say the grain quality analysis. Uh, and the, with the help of the BRS, we are going to actually include this also as a part of the services. There are different type of analysis can be done, including the, the XRF uh, analysis for zinc and iron and magnesium. And the, this is going to be into, in, in the service mode, uh, which will be available to all the uh, all the stakeholders, as I mentioned earlier. With regard to the tri trialing and nursery services, which is mechanization and pheno precision phenotyping, range of services are available through BRS engineering services. If you want to establish a skin house, poly house, they, they, you want to come up with a suitable design and all those, so these services are available, the education management services, agronomic practices, the the farm management uh, system which is also actually you know made available at africa rice uh, the automation and mechanization of the breeding operations uh, and uh, this is large uh, is a very strong support which is um, provided by the brs uh, in order to actually uh, develop uh, not only the good equipments but also that how to how to put it in operations so all these services will be available to, uh, to everyone. Then uh, from the Breeding Research Services Hub, through its digital solution, the Breeding IT services will be available. The, as I said that uh, at Africa Rise, we have the enterprise breeding system uh, in place. This is a central data management system that offers very powerful breeding capabilities to all its users. 
and those who are using it, they are, they are, they are aware of this one. And uh, EBS is the state of the art uh, system to capture and access data anytime, anywhere in the real time. It displays the breeding process and accelerate the crop breeding. Uh, it is a secured ecosystem for, for the breeders that, so that they, they focus on data-driven breeding to create the new and better varieties faster instead of the old system of doing the phenotyping, now it is uh, the, the, the modern breeding way uh, uh, that the, the people should switch on to the data-driven breeding. Support CGR strategy for the breeding network of modernization. EBS is the preferred and recommended breeding data management system of the CGR. So uh, at what stage we are uh, here and what's our plan with regard to the enterprise bidding system? The EBS is adopted at the Africa Rice headquarter and is four research stations uh, actually, uh, those which are located you know, the out outside the Ivory Coast in Senegal, Nigeria, Madagascar and other. So this e EBS will be enabled for the key Africa Rice NAS partners, uh, as we discussed about the Africa Rice Breeding Task Force, we are going to select some key partners uh, in the first phase uh, to so that this, this EBS uh, can be extended to them. And uh, the plan is that by uh, by the quarter four of this year, 2024, we, we, we will reach out to some of the next key national partners. For the rest of the partners, as I said, there are there are thirty national partners. We are working under the Africa Rice, you know, breeding task force. Uh, there is a EBS lighter version which will be available for free, and they they can start actually using that one uh, now this year. And when they are comfortable uh, and they want to switch on to their advanced model of the EBS, they will be allowed to actually move to to a full EBS version. So th this is a backup plan for 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 rest of the national partners, those who are actually uh, uh, not immediately going to the EBS. So EBS and breeding IT support will be provided to by the CGR uh, to the CGR NAS breeding network on, on, on other crops in WCA region. So any any crop, any CGR NAS breeding network, people can also use it. The one of the beauty is that even if you are not a tax savvy, then you don't need to worry because you know the, this is user friendly system, and we we have the local support which will be made available actually to to all the national partners from Africa Rice. We will have the capacity building program. There is a 24 by 7 global user support which will be provided. So, so I think the, this is high time that the, that the national partners should think that how they can actually adopt the this breeding management system. And this is not only the plan, actually, in reality, if you see that the EBS uh, is actually a main system for the rice, wheat, and corn, which is adopted at different CGR centers in 2023. Legumes have joined in 2024. Other crops are following in 2024. But a very important point is that the very first CGNAS breeding network on rice, that is Africa Rice Breeding Task Force Partners, will start onboarding in quarter three of 2024. So this is the first time we are extending it to the national partners, and this is an opportunity for all the national partners to use it. Now this is to summarize what I said actually uh, in all. Until now, we are working with 30 different national partners in Western Central Africa for basically for the testing and trialing. And in the Africa Rice Breeding programs are modernized and their research stations, uh, they, are, they have adopted the EPS. So we want to switch from here to that actually that all the services, global services which are available through the BRS uh, breeding and research services to Africa Rice can be extended. As I already gave the details, the different type of services available will be extended to all the 30 national partners working with Africa Rice. And not only the, those who are working on rice, but CGR NAS breeding networks on all crops in WCA region. This is a very, very ambitious plan. 
And, uh, and uh, as I said, that you know, it's not impossible. And Sonia said that it's going to be a long term. So definitely, with the support from you know all of the the CGI genetic innovation and the national partners working together with the national partners, I think we'll be able to achieve it. <laughs> so this is the partnership for the impact. It's a it's a unique opportunity, um, a, a unique. Um, you know, the, the services, uh, the hub is provided by the CGR. We are very thankful to the, the CGR Genetic Innovation for choosing Africa as, uh, as a preferred partner for that one. The details, uh, you will get it actually soon, either on the BRS website or on Africa Rise BRS hub website, uh, how you are going to utilize these services and, and what, what will be the, the mechanism and other. So keep watching on that one. And thank you so much. Back to Julie. Thank you, Sanjay, for this insightful and comprehensive presentation. Um, now the floor goes to Sharifa. Sharifa, your viewers and your director. Yes. Uh, say a few words. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, great. Thanks, Julie. This is fantastic turnout. 91 people. Amazing. So thank you, everyone, for, for coming to this um, launch of the Hub. And uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Sharifa. I lead the Breeding Resources um, Initiative team, and basically the other half of this partnership. So a quick, quick roundup of what has been said by Sanjay, by Babukar, by, by uh, Sonia. So for Breeding Resources, we are the broker and provider of shared services um, and support for breeding programs in CGNRs. And um, partnerships such as this one, um, allows us to scale the work that we are doing. And particularly with Africa Rise having 30 countries as they are breeding, uh, a member of the breeding task force, that is huge opportunity for us to contribute towards the success of breeding programs um, in Africa Rise, other CG centers and NARS uh, network. So through this um, partnership, we hope to leverage on the resources that um, the network have uh, Africa Rise and um, breeding resources itself, uh, particularly uh, and extend this to the network um, in West and Central Africa to bring world-class um, shared services and support to help um, tackle uh, breeders, particularly tackle complex breeding and research challenges. I think there's many. Um, and through this, we hope to enable breeders to amplify the impact that you are making through your work, delivering new innovations and open up new possibilities. Um, our hope is that this partnership will trigger an outward ripple. I think we can see from Sanji's um, presentation, the, the last slide just now, as he mentioned, it's huge, the task that we want to do, but it's not impossible. Um, and I think by doing this, we will, we will, we will make lasting changes. Um, I guess that's the aim of being sustainable anyway. We still have Q&A, so don't go anywhere. So I'll just wrap this up quickly. And um, so before I leave, I would like to extend um, a very heartfelt thanks to Sonia, Babukar and Sanjay and the Breeding Resources team and all attendees for your participation and contribution. Uh, Breeding Resources, we are always committed to support um, Africa Rise and all NARS partners to achieve your goals in your breeding and research program. We have been working with Africa Rise for a long time, but having this hub now allows us to even um, make the partnership stronger and making it um, a sustainable and long lasting, um, uh, no matter what changes happen within the center, within CG and so on. So with that, thank you and over to you, Julie. Thank you, Sharifa. So we now have time for some questions from participants from the crowd. I do not see any questions in the chat, but, um, oh yes, there is one now. Um, so it's from Peter Sprang, great work, well presented. And the question is, who are the donors behind this? Um, and if others have questions, they can either put them in the chat or raise their hands. Um, I think. So I don't know, we we'll want to take this first question.
Tanya, yeah? Yeah, but um, are the donors behind it? So I can say the idea for um, this kind of partnership does not come from the donors. It comes internally from CGIR staff and leaders across the centres. Um, obviously, also NAS, our NAS partners have been asking for this type of arrangement for a long time. So that's where the idea comes from. But do the donors give it support? Absolutely. Um, they're, they're fully supportive and, and behind this way of working. They see it as a huge step forward. Um, you know, we've made some big breakthroughs recently with the BPATs, um, working with our partners um, to identify where our NAS partners' gaps are. And um, I'm really proud that one of the things we've achieved this year is, is that money has also started to flow. So seeing NAS in Nigeria and Zambia, for instance, um, receiving that funding. And it's all within this model that we are raising the capacity of whole breeding networks, not just of single centers or, or single NAS. All right, thank you, Sharifa. Uh, and just to add, um, for your information, um, this is not the first um, agreement of such that we are signing with Africa Rise. Uh, early this year, we signed with Erie, and essentially to establish um, not uh, basically uh, as Sonia mentioned. I think what we want to do is scale what we do, and the best way to do it, of course, to work with centers and and different centers. We have been talking to different centers, and you will see many more of such of these hubs coming up um, soon, and uh, for us to um, extend further the work that we are doing with breeding programs in the centers, in the regions, and so on. So, yeah. Thanks. And, and also to answer Peter's question more specifically, he's I think it's, he's also asking who's funding this. Um, so who is funding this is a mix of uh, pooled funding that has come from all of the system council donors collectively, um, but also uh, funding specifically from the Bill and, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Sharifa, have I got that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions from participants which you can either mm. add to the chat or? Julie, in the meantime, I could just add uh, to what uh, Sonia and uh, Sharifa rightly mentioned. The, the, the initiative definitely is uh, one of the areas where the CG has been really asked to increase its attention on that is the engagement with the national programs, with the NAS, national partners. So as you know, the CG has really been impactful, like I mentioned, but then we believe one area where we can make more impact is by strengthening the capacity of the national programs in the various areas, particularly technical areas. So that breeding capacity in many of our national programs has not been strong in a continuous manner. Quite often, sometimes we have only one or two very highly trained and capable breeders, but whenever one or two, one, whenever they move, usually there is a vacuum. So there's a problem of continuity within the system. So this is the reason why establishing such a platform very close to where the breeding act, uh, breeders are based we definitely will allow the breeders to be, the countries to access this capacity on a much more regular basis, but also long-term. But as I mentioned also, the high priority for this in this platform is actually the capacity building on a continuous basis of the national programs with regard to breeding capacity, modern approaches in breeding. So definitely, I think uh, it's a very good opportunity for those of us who are in this region here, definitely for our national partners to get access to these technologies and these capabilities very, very quickly, and both also on a much more sustainable basis, long term also. Back to you, Julie. Thank you. Um, so, I uh, guess we have a question from the crowd. Um, so, Tadese, if you want to take the floor. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, very nice presentation. Uh, my question is uh, to uh, Sanjay, who presented very nicely. Uh, but important is also uh, this hub 
may be uh, a good uh, platform for capacity building, but uh, to undertake uh, genotyping services and all this, uh, there might be also a problem associated with germplasm shipment uh, and quarantine issues. So mm -hmm. how do we are going to address this one? The second thing is uh, the rapid uh, recycling activities, which we are trying to do at TJR. Uh, the rapid we are recycling as parents, we may lack to understand what we are really combining. And in your presentation also, the term that phenotyping is like an old breeding method uh, may not be uh, that sounding good because whichever molecular tool we are applying, if we don't have a good phenotyping platform, we will not end up releasing good varieties. Mm -hmm. And understanding what we combine, that matters really. Uh, our grandfathers, our fathers, they used arranged marriage, for example. That arranged marriage for me as a breeder tells me how they were very careful to understand the history of the families even before bringing marriage. Mm -hmm. In the same token, uh, one of uh, my uh, supervisor, uh, Dr. Ra Rajaram, Sanjay Rajaram, you know, the, the, the famous wheat breeder, used to tell me that most of the breeder's time is invested in characterizing the parents. You may, you may, you may, you may run fast, but if you don't look your road, you may be broken apart. So some of the things that we are promoting, this re rapid recycling, fast breeding, speed breeding, all this. I'm afraid we need to be careful. Yes, marker acid selection. Yes, marker acid recombination, gene primering is important. But the way we have to do it, it needs uh, well documentation. And most of the national programs, they do invest, assuming that these are all profitable. And at the end of the day, they may not have anything. We have seen it in the double haploid technology they have invested, in the, in the, in the molecular facilities they have invested. But at the end of the day, there is nothing there now. So we need to be careful. But I fully agree the way you presented it. It is really good to train breeders, bringing at this platform capacity building because national programs, they don't have well, uh, you know, trained scientists. And then how can we show them the different automated systems in the database management, in the machineries, so that CGIR can help these national programs to develop in their own countries, these phenotyping platforms, capacity building. So two points to summarize, the rapid recycling of parents, we need to be careful because in, I believe instead of making it rapid, making to have a clear understanding of what we are combining because it is from the parents we get the good children. So uh, the second thing, uh, make uh, you know capacity building at national levels so that centers, national programs need to be strong so that they can develop a general problem, they can utilize the general problem with supply, and they will be able to release and scale up the technologies. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Dr. Say. Um, uh, I don't know uh, if one of the speakers want to reply. Uh, yes. Can I? Yeah, uh, th thanks very much. Actually, you know, uh, uh, I think his name was Tadase. So, uh, yeah, the, so capacity building in all the areas, what we discussed, you know, today under the breeding and research services hub is an inbuilt uh, item. And th that is what we mean by actually the empowering the national partners uh, 
uh, for the breeding modernization. So capacity building is the key. And that number of you know training programs, workshops, and uh, through mutual interactions, knowledge sharing, and all such things, uh, we, we will actually uh, bring the national partners on board uh, with regard to all these technologies. That's one thing. Second thing, I think uh, I fully agree, you know, with the, you that the phenotyping is the key. I have not said that the phenotyping is going to be replaced by something else. So until or unless we have a very precise or precision phenotyping, all the technologies, tools, what we talk about with the rapid cycle genomic selection and all such things will not work. The predictions will not be correct if the phenotyping is not so phenotyping is the key, and uh, I fully agree with you. And we we have you know the the experience of working with these tools, validating it, and then uh, is is being in routinely used now in in most of the breeding programs at the CGR level in some institutes. So uh, yeah, we are aware of all those threats, but uh, your your point is well taken. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sanjay. Um, we have two questions now in the chat, which I'm going to read out loud. The first one is from Moses, um, who says, we have breeders and private seed and uh, agricultural companies. So will they be included as well, I guess, in this partnership? Uh, Sarifa, you want to take it? Yes, um, as I mentioned, this partnership is about um, working with um, Africa Rice and their, their partners. So if those uh, private seed companies, um, uh, small, medium enterprise companies, uh, breeding companies, uh, within the scope of Africa Rice partnerships, we will support um, all of them. So we, we will support, we, we will extend the support to, to those um, groups of uh, community, as Sonia puts it. So, yeah. Julie, can I add there? Please go ahead, yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I think uh, Sharif answered it very well. But uh, to add to what uh, she just said, the private sector indeed are very much included in the, this partnership also. Because uh, within the breeding task force that Sanjay rightly uh, explained all, the, all about the partnership include both the public and private uh, companies that are working on breeding and also varietal improvement and varietal dissemination. So already we have a history of working with several uh, private companies where their breeders are invited to breeding task force events and they share the results of trial, trials that were interested to them through the breeding task force. So to the colleague who asked that question, yes, the private sector breeding capacity building also is going to be taken on board because they are all contributing with regards to how to accelerate varietal turnover in the African continent here. So just to add also the colleague, I mean, Tadesa made a very excellent uh, talk with regard to not to forget about phenotyping. Of course, the rapid cycle uh, breeding approaches he's talking about, like Sanjay said, the basis is good phenotyping. It's just that, as you know now, the capacity for exploiting data is so huge that uh, when you have a good phenotyping data, a, a lot of that information can be combined with your genotyping data to, to make very good predictions with regards to parental selection. So it's just an improvement of conventional breeding that Sanjay is talking about, which can allow the breeder to be able to select the parents and also close the breeding cycle much more faster. So it's not going to be like we are just putting us behind all the old approaches. Phenotyping is at the core of breeding and it can never be uh, ex uh, excluded. Always good uh, prediction data, usually always have to rely on also the phenotyping data to be able to do the validation, but also for future predictions also. Back to you, Julie. Thank you. Um, there was a second question to Sanjay, maybe also to um, the rest of the speakers about possibility to um, partnering with the uh, universities. This is a, a, quick, a question from Joffrey. So, yeah, can I answer, Judith? So, so this partnership is actually clearly mentioned by Sarifa and Babukar, you know, that uh, we, we have, you know, the, the partners 
when we say the NAS national partners, actually the universities are also the part of that one. So the national institutes, the universities, those who are working with us or those who are working on rice and willing to join the breeding task force, they are also invited. So uh, yeah, that is within the scope. And there can be different type of, you know, the capacity building uh, opportunities also if you want to extend it to the PhD students and uh, the, the postgraduate students, they, they can come and work at Africa Rice and learn these techniques and you know tools and technologies. So yeah, we can talk about that one in detail. Uh, one is two. Thanks. Thank you. Um, see another question in the chat, uh, maybe to Sharifa, which is about the cost of the services uh, and how to actually access them for NOL specifically. This is a question from Star. Sure. Um, so, um, so how to access them? We have uh, already developed and used already uh, what we call CGIR service portal. And um, at the moment, all services service requests have gone through that. I think we can share the link um, along with the uh, information, the, the, this launch um, later, Judy can share that. And in terms of cost, I think at the moment we have end with with volume, we have been um, working out the most cost effective way to provide these services, and we continuously um, look into how to be even more cost effective. We are even now as we are speaking, we have a project to even reduce um, for the um, uh, genotyping cost, for example. So, and then also through a collective um, um, community like this, we can perhaps look at how to best use the services so that the, the services can be used by NARS because um, it's about um, network breeding. So everyone needs to access it and we, are, we, we, we will work with um, everyone um, that is uh, want to access it to get the best um, cost uh, so that uh, all the services can be used by everyone, yeah. All right, thank you. Yes, um, so all the links and resources will be added to the even page that is hosted in cgil.org. It was in the um, invitation sent to all participants, and this is where we'll also upload the recording of this event. So all the resources will be hosted there. Um, are there any other questions? Before... I have one question. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, this time the question is to uh, Sharifa and Sonia. Uh, so this is a good model representing uh, West Africa. Uh, so at CGR level, if we believe, and I strongly believe that this is a good approach to bring resources together so that, you know, uh, countries will benefit out of it. So what is the plan to expand this vision into Central and West Africa and North Africa, where I am based in Morocco, Rabat. Uh, second, to South Asia, uh, especially representing the Indian platform. So what is the vision going forward from TGR level? Thank you. Um, we are already actually working through ICARDA for North um, Africa. And we also recently, uh, but before this, we have also been but, uh, working with um, ICRISAT yeah, for um, South Asia. And uh, basically, as I mentioned as well, we are present in Southeast Asia as well. So we are essentially um, covering all the regions. We have our teams um, within these regions as well. And I think most of them are in this meeting. Um, so we can have all, you can contact them. We have a team in, in Kenya um and uh, so, uh, in india for example and then we are also serving ikarda uh, for north uh, africa so we are basically everywhere so we can put you in touch with any of our team if there is a specific uh, request uh, from you and again i think we can give those resources those names uh, of the teams um to everyone here so that we can get going i guess thank you for that question All right.
right, thank you. Um, any last question from the crowd? There is a lot of uh, appreciation, I just wanted to say, um, in the chat from the participants um, that are were all very enthusiastic. Uh, there is a question, yes, from Chance. Uh, what is the duration of this project? If there is one. Um, I guess forever. <laughs> I think this is the beginning of <laughs> this is the beginning of the the official beginning. I would say we have been working together, right, Babuka? This is an official beginning, and we hope to be here for as long as we can. Sharifa, I think I just want to add that we want to be here for as long as we are needed. Because uh, maybe that's better. <laughs> exactly, we want to be able to train the us to get to the capacity whereby the CG doesn't does need uh, to be here anymore. Because once the NAS have the capacity exactly, to, be, yes. to do all these services, definitely we focus our attention elsewhere. So, uh, for the near future, actually, this BRS is going to be linked with what we call the CGIR mega programs. Because presently, we are trying to develop uh, the areas of research in which the CG will be conducting uh, its activities over the next five years, until 2030, actually, not next six years. So there, within those uh, different areas of research, the building resources services will be linked to the genetic innovation activities there. So that at least we expect for the next five years, the funding for the CG breeding programs will be able to cover the activities of this, uh, this function and this platform. But then, as Sharifa is saying, we are expecting that these services will actually continue up to the point whereby we definitely find out that the, CG, the national programs, the private breeding companies have that capacity on the ground to be able to really develop very good varieties for the countries, for, uh, I mean, the, for the countries in Africa, also, of course, in the other areas also, like Sharifa mentioned, because BRS is not only for Africa. There are other regions where also, also such an agreement or such an arrangement has been made. So definitely, back to the co colleague who asked the question, we expect really for this to be a long-term engagement. Can, can I also just come in with some final words here? I mean, I, I said earlier on that the idea of this kind of platform, this hub, came from within CGIR, and, and this is the moment where I'd really like to give tribute to Sanjay, to Babakar, and to all of the staff at Africa Rice, because among all of the CGIR centers, you have always worked the most closely with NARS as equals, as peers, and you've really been an inspiration um, for the rest of us in CGIR to follow that lead and to try to build those types of relationships that you've always modeled. So thank you for being first movers. And again, thank you um, for being the leaders of this platform in the Western Central Africa region. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Well, I think uh, we're reaching the end of this webinar. So as there are no further questions in the chat or from the crowd, um, I'd like to thank all the speakers and all the participants for joining. Um, the recording, as I was saying, will be added to the event page. Um, thank you so much and have a great, great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.